In this short video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the capabilities that can be utilized within Factory Design Suite to help configure and set up different types of products. Most of the time, we consider Factory Design Suite to be more of a layout tool for an industrial space or uh, manufacturing space or even a retail space, anything that you'd want to configure as a layout. But what many people aren't aware of is that using the connector technology, it can actually be a very powerful product configurator. So in this example, we're going to go ahead and lay out uh, what would commonly be called a display booth. So I'm going to go ahead and place some base plates. And so one of the first things to know as we're building this configuration is I've got this marked off plane, which is a lot of grid work and I can snap components to it. And so as I lay out my first base plate and I just plop it onto one of the corners of the grid, it automatically snaps in place. And then I have the ability to move it around if I want or to rotate it uh, if need be. I don't have to in this case. And so I can go ahead and click done and I can place the next one which I'll place just over here and then you can be finished right clicking hitting done <coughs> but now if I look at the front view of my view cube you can see that it actually placed it on top of that plane so we're able to utilize this floor plane in order to position components so I'll place the next component here somewhere up in this area and then being able to utilize that rotation tool can be very nice if I need to rotate this say 180 degrees like so and so we can quickly reposition those components so now that we've got the base plates in position I'm gonna go ahead and drop in some of these connecting pieces so this is the other powerful functionality within the factory design suite these little connectors you see these little green globes and as we get close enough it actually snaps the model in place so this can save a lot of time over traditional 3d constraining there we go. and then we're going to place a couple here and here just have to make sure we get the orientation right and there we have it. So now that we've put these base posts in, now we can actually put in some beams. So if I grab some of these vertical beams, we can just continue to snap the model together. So again, this is one of the powerful functionalities within the factory design suite is I'm able to just quickly put this model together. So imagine this is a layout of a display case, but it could be uh, a robot that we're piecing together with different types of servos, different arm attachments, etc., etc. So it really is a, a quick and easy, fast way to build a layout. So another very powerful aspect to the factory design suite is that we can utilize core inventor functionality like parameter manipulation or even <clears throat> iLogic, if you're familiar with that, to further control our design. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn on the factory properties and this allows me to get access to each one of these models which are called assets and then I can change their values. So for example I've got a length here of 24. Well that's not going to be nearly tall enough. So if I click in here I've been given a range of sizes for this display booth. So if I click on 96 and then I go ahead and drive that chain, you'll see one of these numbers increase length. And so I can quickly reconfigure a model to be whatever base configuration is required. So I'm going to go ahead and place a couple more of these assets, like so, and like so. And then I'll do a couple more here. and here and here and here so again quickly snap them together 
I'm going to change the length of all of these. Grab these two, and let's make those both, say, uh, 84. So as we resize these, see that increase in length, great. And I'll grab these four, and we'll make those each 70. Uh, I'll make them 60. And so now we'll connect up everything. So I can grab this, place it here. And now that moved that whole panel over. And then I can come in here, grab this one. And again, utilizing iLogic, I could say I want to make this mm, 36, and I want to turn on another connector. So if I hit OK, now when we see this beam, when we go to use the connect tool, it gives us a whole nother set of connectors that we can utilize. So I'm going to drag this connector over to this one. And notice how it repositions the entire assembly. So the beautiful part is, even if we've got these put together, we could make changes. I'm actually going to ground this quickly. So we can make changes to these if we decided, you know what, 60 just wasn't enough. We want to make those 84. We can make those as well adapt, stays connected, things like that. Very, very powerful. And so I'll add one more piece here, just as a little bit of a display model. And again, use the connectors to quickly grow that shape. And then we'll edit this. So we say the height, 96, that's easy to do. And then we can also utilize the measuring technology within Inventor. So if we're not specifically sure what a measure is. We can just grab this value here quick. There's 177.45. Let's update this. <clears throat> and now the panel covers that whole display case. So that's part of the power of the factory design suite. We can quickly configure, we can make modifications. Um, <clears throat> we can also design in AutoCAD or Inventor. AutoCAD gives us the ability to work in 2D, so it's an excellent floor planning tool. And the 3D gives us the opportunity to work in an elevation. So instead of trying to guess layers and connectors, we can actually bring it into Inventor when we need to do 3D work, like stacking the posts on top of the base plates, etc., etc. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, because we can actually take 3D models from Factory Design Suite and transition them into AutoCAD. So if I click on the Sync AutoCAD tool, Go ahead and save this up, produce that 2D floor plan for us. It takes a moment or two. Go ahead and say, yep, go open up in AutoCAD. <clears throat> and we can see what it did. It actually created a 2D overlay. And now when we jump over to the AutoCAD program, here is our model in 2D. So again, we can work whichever way we want to. So for example, we can use traditional AutoCAD commands, and if we wanted to rotate this negative 90 degrees, now our display case could face this way. We can also build in AutoCAD, not just transition from Inventor. So if I wanted to place some conveyors, maybe we're going to have some conveyors deliver product to our display case. We can go ahead and set up the <clears throat> conveyor set right here, and you can see there are connectors in an AutoCAD as well. And so we can actually create assets either in AutoCAD or Inventor, whatever makes the most sense for our operation, and then transition between the two. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then I'm going to sync it back to Inventor. And it'll just prompt me to go ahead and close out the AutoCAD. We don't want things getting out of sync. So it closes the AutoCAD file, updates the model, and then infers the connectors into the 3D. So here we are back in Inventor. You can see our display case is now rotated 30 degrees, or 90 degrees. 
And now I can take a look at one of the other powerful features of Inventor. So if you remember those connectors we had allowed us to snap build the models very quickly. It also gives us the capability of actually passing parameter values between assets. So for example, because these are chained together, these three conveyors, if I changed the width from say 28 to 48 and then clicked on the lightning, but then it actually updates all of the assets that are that are chained together via those connectors. So it's an excellent way to pass along different parameter values. I've used this for say paint color. I've used it for item numbers. You can even pass along wiring type information. It's this very powerful type of functionality. So I hope that you can see that Factory Design Suite, while primarily it was designed to do layouts, it's actually very, very flexible in that you can configure just about anything. So don't just let it stop at, at that layout for your facility or your shop or whatever. You could actually configure machines. You could configure your products. So hopefully you found this instructive. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out.